Good morning, Seba Prep School, uh, on a beautiful Friday morning as the sun streams through my kitchen window. I uh, hope you're looking forward to the weekend and well done on another strong week in your remote learning. Today's eAssembly is about one of our core values at Seba Prep School, one of the ways of the wolf, and it is collaboration, working as a team. Uh, never is that more obvious than in our music, our sport, our extracurricular activity. Lots of girls working hard over the course of the last two terms in their cricket skills, pre-season training, uh, early morning training. I know that Mr Bundy was perhaps disappointed that we didn't get the chance to get them out on the pitch this summer. Um, but hold fire because we've managed to. We've put together a girls cricket match and to show it to you is our pupil leaders for our summer term. That's the head boy, head girl, their deputies and our heads of day house. And they've collaborated brilliantly, I think you'll agree, to produce this video. So I'm gonna leave it to them. Um, over to you, Seb Jones. Thank you, Mr. Newman. Today you can see we have great excitement in the crowd. Next, we have Bruno. My other commentator, over to you. That's right, Seb. I've seen some amazing creativity being used by the girls to get their cricket kits together. I've seen saucepans and a, a, a mixture of uh, kitchen utensils, so it should shape out to be a pretty good game. Although in England, the conditions are a little bit boggy. They're not ideal for cricket, but um, I, I'm confident that in Leeds, the weather is going to be slightly better here uh, because as you can see, it's, it's quite boggy. But yeah, over to you, Seb. It has also shown great creativity to find a wicket in their own home. No doubt that there is something special about these batsmen and bowlers. At different ends, though. Coming in next to bat is Tilly Hines. Oh, the ball did not reach the bat. Well, it is 15.3 miles, so you could understand that. Hang on a second. The wickets are a bit too long. Instead of being 17 miles, it's 17.1 miles. Oh, this is a travesty! As you can tell, we've had a bit more rain here in Cumbria. It's uh, messing up, but uh, I have no worries because I've heard that Ella Starling is a bit of a demon bowler and hopefully she should just skim over the water. It's a great catch from Hattie Newman. Well done. And thank you very much to all of the year eights in collaborating and putting that together so well. Um, those of you who didn't know Bruno's Australian heritage, uh, feel yourself fully informed now. Um, what was amazing actually, and I was saying this to another member of staff just the other day, um, through the course of Wednesday afternoon when those boys and girls were putting that together, were the messages that I could see as part of that team flying backwards and forwards. Uh, so despite being spread apart by 
several miles. The collaboration and the way they worked together and brought it together as a team was really, really impressive. Not easy to do, and I think they did a great job. So well done, folks. Um, also on the theme of collaboration, I'm really, really grateful to speak to our chaplain, Reverend Sweeting, who's going to speak to us now and also give our prayer this week. Thank you, Paul. Good morning. It's really good to join you at the prep school. Today's focus, what I want to talk to you about, is collaboration. Working together to achieve something, a common goal. I thought one of the great examples of that that we've got all around us is nature itself. Just think about ants in their nest and all the hard work that they do, collaborating together, each doing their own particular job for the nest itself to succeed. And of course, uh, certain kinds of bees, like honeybees, do exactly the same thing. And you've probably seen geese flying overhead at certain times of the year and those amazing V formations that they have, collaborating so that they can get themselves from A to B with the great level of support that they provide to each other. The trouble is that in our world, in the world that you and I live in, so often the focus seems to be much more on the individual, on the self. It can be about how popular you are, or how good you are at sport personally, or how good you are personally at academics. There's nothing wrong with any of those things. They're good in a way. But if you haven't got that collaborative spirit, that team spirit of working together, then we're really missing out on something that's just so important and makes life worth living. And collaboration actually helps us to stop being so self-centred as we might be tempted to be otherwise. And I don't know about you, but I'm sure for a lot of you, what you're missing right now about life at the prep school is that collaboration. For example, in a sports team, that working together, that great feeling you get when, as a team, you achieve something that, if you were just an individual, you could never hope to achieve. That togetherness and that collaboration is a really special feeling and is part of what makes us human. And I've chosen to record this in a very special place for the school because it's another great symbol, actually, of collaboration. Let me show you what I mean. We're actually here at the Cloisters at the Senior School. And of course, on the walls here are names of people who fought and died in the First and in the Second World War. I've just walked past names of St Bergens who fought and died in both of those wars and of course we've just recently celebrated the 75th anniversary of VE Day. That was a huge endeavour and could never have been successfully achieved without a massive amount of collaboration in army units, in air force, in the navy, people back home, the merchant navy, all of the different allies working together. That collaboration was absolutely critical to that final success. It took a long time but they did get there. And it's going to be collaboration that will help us also to get through the current pandemic, whether that's collaboration in smaller teams like the prep school or nationally for the UK, or of course internationally. Collaboration is key to all of that. The lovely thing, the beautiful thing, is that God himself collaborates all the time. I want to show you what I mean by that by reading a bit of John's Gospel, chapter 10. Then came the Feast of Dedication in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was in the temple area, walking in Solomon's colonnade. The Jewish leaders gathered around him, saying, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I did tell you, but you do not believe. The miracles I do in my Father's name speak for me, but you do not believe because you are not my sheep. My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they shall never perish. No one can snatch them out of my hand. My Father, who has given them to me, is greater than all. No one can snatch them out of my Father's hand. I and the Father are one. 
And right there in that reading, you've got a powerful picture of how Jesus and his Father are one. They collaborate together. They are one in his spirit. And if you think about Mr. Gorst's assembly recently, when he spoke about being a shepherd and he was feeding the lambs, you've got here right in what Jesus is saying about his sheep. Just as God collaborates within who God is, so God collaborates with us and we can collaborate with God. Whenever you show kindness, you can be collaborating. Whenever you show thoughtfulness to somebody else, you can be collaborating with God. Whenever you show mercy, you are collaborating with God. And that's part of what makes us human. And it's part of what makes God's heart sing when we do it. Let us pray. We're going to take a few moments just to do some simple prayers to pray for ourselves and the people in our lives and the wider world. The prayer that we're going to use, you can do at home anytime you want. There's a structure to help you to pray. Picture a stone being dropped into a pool of still water and the ripples moving outwards. Right at the very centre is you yourself. Take a few moments to pray just for yourself, for your life, for your future. move outwards to include those closest to you. Take a moment to pray for your family and your close friends, the people who are really part of the heart of your life. And the ripples go further out still. Now pray for your wider family and your wider friends, the people you know at school. And the ripples on the pond can move out even further now to include the country that you live in, whether that's the UK or somewhere else. Pray for your country now. move even further still to include the whole world. Take a moment to pray for the world and particular places in it. So now we close our prayers by saying the grace together. We say the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, evermore. Amen. Thank you, Reverend Sweeting. And that's it for another week. Enjoy the sunshine. I hope it lasts all weekend. Get outside, enjoy the fresh air, enjoy each other's company, and I'll see you next week. Bye now.